Dublin's most famous gay pub, the George, used to be a place of sanctuary. But now the crowds are celebrating and they want the world to know about it. Ireland is the only country in the world to say yes to same-sex marriage in a popular vote. The result has confounded stereotypes and given newfound confidence. All the way from Ireland that you thought was a backward country, but we have more progressive laws than you right now. This year, more than 1.2 million Irish voters, 62%, voted yes for marriage equality. A referendum was needed rather than just a vote in Parliament because the definition of marriage is enshrined in the Irish Constitution. The result signalled a remarkable shift. The nation which had obeyed the Catholic Church for centuries turned its back on tradition. a journey across Ireland to find out why the yes vote was successful and what it means for the future of this country. Much of the focus of the referendum was on Dublin, but out in the countryside is where the campaign was fought village by village, district by district. Many same-sex couples in rural Ireland have been waiting a long time for recognition and acceptance. So what time are we leaving out on Saturday, Tony? Tony McCann and Jimmy O'Brien have been together for 17 years. Jimmy came out as a teenager and spent a long time wondering if he really was the only oh, gay in the I village. Know, oh, it was very hard because for years it was felt like I was the only, you know, I, I was the only gay person because it must have been three, four years after, you know, before I actually met another gay person. Yeah. How was your bagels? Lovely. Very nice, actually. Tony only yeah, came not, out a few no. months ago, not just to tell his family he's gay, but that he That's and it. Jimmy are getting married. You've got two days. My mum and dad are getting quite old now, and uh, I was very conscious of the fact that I don't know, I don't know whether I would, would, have, would have felt right if they had died and I hadn't told them. I don't. I don't think that would have sat right with me at all. Like so, I kind of said, "Okay, look, now they can they can take a bit of a shock now. So let's <laughs> sell them now before they get too old to take it." Like, come on, come on, Lucy, Charlie, Bobby, come on. Jimmy and Tony come on, live a quiet life in County Wexford, southeast of Dublin. Come on, come on, come on, come on. But only a generation ago, their relationship could have know, landed so. them in jail. Yeah, Homosexual well, acts like were a criminal offence in Ireland like until 1993. Yeah. It gives you an idea of just how much attitudes have changed. Before the uh, the referendum went, went through, uh, I was kind of saying, well, you know, if this referendum doesn't pass, how can I live in this country? And that was my, my thinking beforehand. How am I going to, if this doesn't pass, how, how am I going to live in this country knowing that uh, most of the population here don't accept me for who I am or for what I am, you know. Um, everyone knows someone that's gay. And I think everyone sort of realised that you know, everybody is entitled to happiness. Everyone is entitled to, you know, to be with who they want to be. Um, and I think that's why it was such a success. Jimmy and Tony's families are loyal and loud in their support. They're all getting ready for the wedding in February. 
I'm delighted for him. I'm just really over the moon for him. Like, I can't wait for the wedding day, especially because I'm bridesmaid. <laughs> it's usually with Anne Marie, you can hear her across the packed room. Um, out of all my family, my mammy is the quietest, so she, she's shy and timid. Um, except when you cross her, um, I know people say that their family are the best and their sisters and all. Well, I had no, I've no brothers, um, and but my sisters are. They are. They're brilliant. They're the best in the world. Family weddings are a big deal in Ireland, and this one will be no different. How excited are you about the wedding day, Ashley? Happy. <laughs> Happy. Wedding day. Nepal uh, too. Yeah, there we go. Ash, your toast be ready now in a minute. All right? Ashling is the last of Sissy O'Brien's six kids. The decades of mothering have been tough, but Sissy has always loved her children for who they are, not what other people judge them to be. When did you first realise that, that Jimmy might be gay? Um, I remember turning around to him and saying, Jimmy, a young gay, and he said, yes, Mammy, I am. And I said, well, thanks be to God, I'm die happy now, that's all I said. <laughs> because you knew? Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised at it at all, so I wasn't, no. How much do you love your son? Oh, I absolutely adore him, so I do. <laughs> absolutely adore him, so I do now. Because he's brilliant now, so he is, I have to say. Just a few years ago, the Catholic Church was like a member of the family. Some local priests felt entitled to direct the lives of parishioners. The hallmarks of that time are still here, but the obedience has gone. I'm divorced now, and if I go into the, to the chapel, I cannot receive all the union. I have to do this to sign that I'm divorced. And I think the Catholic Church now is, shouldn't have any say in whether a person is gay or whatever now, after all the abuse that went on in it. The Catholic Church has towered over the local village of Enniscorthy for hundreds of years, but its influence has been weakened by sexual abuse scandals and changing times. The marriage equality referendum put that to the test. At a mass on Saturday night, shortly before the vote, the local priest read out a letter from the bishop urging people to vote no. The response was swift and clear. Several parishioners got up and walked out of the cathedral, including members of the choir. I think. There was a lot of people afterwards spoke about it and said, oh, that was terrible what you know, the bishops did. But I think you know, if more people had have been brave like those people and got up and walked out and said, no, you know, you're wrong. This has nothing to do with church. It's, you know, um, I think if more people had have got up and walked out, I, I would have shook their hands. I do believe, though, I do believe that the church has a place here in Ireland. Um, I, I really do believe that. We realistically here in Ireland have an awful lot to be thankful to the Catholic Church for, like, I mean, schools, hospitals. Uh, if it hadn't been for the Catholic Church, we wouldn't have any of those. <laughs> they wouldn't be as good as they are, like, you know. They are wrong in some issues, but not, not at all, you know. Do you see the other T-shirt, Tony? Yeah, I think it's up here. Oh, yeah. yeah. There it is, there. Perfect. There you go. So, cool. The Yes campaign won in Enniscorthy. Now, Jimmy and Tony are taking the chance to celebrate. I am, it's exciting. They're on their way to the annual Gay Pride March in Dublin for the very first time. Hi, girls. Can we get a picture with you? So lovely, I'm lovely. Hello. It's a whole new world for Jimmy and Tony. A long awaited chance to put their love on show. Life has changed. <laughs> the mission really, really, really changed an awful lot. Um, to be actually here and to be, don't care, I can hold his hand, I can put my arm around him, it's fine, it's not, not, it's not a problem. And, you know, I've said it before, like, somebody's problem is theirs, it's not mine. It's great. That's um, a pretty different to a quiet Saturday down in Wexford, huh? It is, it's a bit different, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's not, not, not what we normally get up to on a Saturday, yes.
began as a small march for gay rights in 1983 has grown from a demonstration to a celebration. This is the first gay pride parade in Dublin since the referendum result. Gay and straight people have turned out in their thousands. This is the largest gathering of its kind on record. It's not only a celebration for those who supported the yes vote, but it's an effort to build up momentum and keep the change going in Ireland. The parade winds its way through working class neighbourhoods, which delivered some of the highest yes votes in the country. But years ago, this was hostile ground. In the space of my lifetime, Ireland has been transformed and the situation for lesbians and gay men has been utterly, utterly transformed and it's, it's so fantastic. What's the feeling in your heart today? Uh, delight. <laughs> um, and a certain element of wonderment almost that, um, you know, that you, you, it's like a dream because we came from being so marginalised um, and even though we knew we, and we hoped we could make progress, to make this amount of progress uh, is just, it, sometimes it's hard to believe, it's not, it's not like a dream. This is one of the most important places for the Catholic Church in Ireland. Priests have been trained at St Patrick's College, Maynooth, for centuries, but now few young Irish men want to enrol here. I find myself, the younger generation, are much more open than you might imagine, just that they haven't heard the message, they haven't heard the truth. And um, when one has the courage to speak to the people about what is, of course, the beauty of, of uh, the Christian vi vision of sexuality and marriage, you know, uh, then of, and chastity, then, of course, people's eyes open and said, my goodness, we've never realised this. Why do you think same-sex marriage is wrong? Because marriage is between men and women. Because of tradition? Not tradition, it's nature, human nature, yeah. Since the beginning of time, there have been many kinds of marriage, polygamy, monogamy, and, you know, one man with, with, with men, with many women, and all the rest of it. But there's never been, marriage was never considered to be between people of the same sex. At its peak, the church's authority was almost unquestioned. But as the years moved on, horrific stories emerged of sexual abuse and cruelty perpetrated by the clergy. Many here believe it was a turning point in the relationship between the church and the people. Bit by bit, we were discovering the most awful truths about Ireland. We were discovering that all of the pious rhetoric uh, since the foundation of the state uh, about, you know, holy, catholic, pious Ireland um, was actually covering a, a, a kind of a hellish Ireland. I think an awful lot of people resolved that whatever it took, we were never going to visit that kind of suffering and torment on people again and that we needed to as it were, make whatever changes were necessary to our, our laws and policies. Today, 84% of people in Ireland identify as Catholic. But in the past 20 years, the number of people attending weekly mass has dropped by half to only 41%. So when the referendum came along in May, the church knew it had limited influence. Bishops didn't go on radio or television, didn't engage in the public debate. I think that was right, yeah. 
So um, I think the government might, would have liked to have seen it as a church-state uh, uh, clash. And it's been presented since then as though it were. It's not. The church was late into the debate and claims it couldn't compete with the reach of the Yes campaign. You know, it was David against Goliath. And in this case, Goliath unfortunately won. Go out and vote. That's the important thing. Go out and vote. The Yes campaign was cashed up thanks to multi-million dollar donations from the United States and closer to home. Anna, would you like a lift to the polling station? Is there room for Auntie Patsy? I go on. They used those resources to launch a highly successful social media strategy that humanised their cause. Cos if I could see your Dad, face once more... Will you come with me? I wouldn't miss it for the world. The campaign was rough at times. Prominent psychologist Maureen Gaffney was accused of comparing no voters to Nazis. During the campaign, you received a lot of criticism for your comments talking about uh, exclusion from marriage in places like apartheid South Africa and also Nazi Germany. Do you stand by those comments? Well, the comments that I, I made were in the context of showing that excluding certain classes of people from marriage um, for, for whatever reason is historically a way of oppressing people. Uh, it's a way of saying that there's a superior caste and an inferior caste and that they, they can't, as it were, get together. Um, and I, I totally stand by that. That's a, it's, it's kind of silly even saying I stand by it because it's a historical fact. The uh, gay rights lobby have actually introduced an ideology that needs to be questioned. And um, people have got to stand up and be, and be counted. I think courage is, is needed against what is a massive international um, campaign to have these rights, uh, so-called rights, uh, you know, in, enshrined in re legislation. <laughs> Exactly a week after the Gay Pride March, conservative campaigners have taken to the very same streets. This is the other side of the debate about marriage, children and family. We were the first country to vote by a public vote to, to redefine marriage, but we're also the only country in the world now to have same-sex marriage in the Constitution. And all our laws flow from the Constitution. So things like surrogacy, adoption rights, and all the rest of it get totally redefined because the family got redefined as part of this. And I thought, right, we need to have same-sex relationships recognised and put on an equal status. And that can be done through civil partnerships, of which I campaigned for. But we do not need to redefine marriage. Keith Mills has been a vocal campaigner for the no side. He doesn't see any need for gay marriage in Ireland, even though he is gay. I'm a gay man and on May 22nd I'll be voting no to same-sex marriage because I believe children deserve a mother and a father where possible. This idea of a gay community all believing the same thing is, is very simplistic. The only thing that gay people have in common is their sexual orientation. They come from all kinds of backgrounds. They come from all kinds of strata in society. They are religious, non-religious, rural, you know. So the idea that they would all think the same and have the same opinion is ridiculous. The marriage referendum has been like coming Keith out Mills's all over Keith Mills' campaign video went viral and had more than 800,000 views because on YouTube. Because there are YouTube. too many people being bullied into silence. I felt a little uncomfortable with the way the yes side played the what I call the pity the poor gay scenario, you know, oh, we're a poor marginalised minority and our mental well-being is in danger. And I'm going, you know, this is a country with equality at every level. We have gay minister, ministers in the government and high court judges, you know, business leaders, you know, every strat of society, sports men and women, all role models that you'd ever want. There are gay out and proud people. So this playing the pity the poor gay didn't ring nicely with me, I have to say. I thought it was a, 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 a bit far-fetched.
But in the end, the Yes campaign won, capitalising on that most Irish of institutions, the family, and along the way creating some unlikely viral video stars. Paddy White is a devout Catholic. He and his wife Breach have been married for 50 years. Our voices, you see, weren't being heard. The older people, they like, weren't being heard, so we're very happy to get on board. Hello, I'm Breach. And I'm Paddy. We are voting for equal marriage. We hope you will vote with us. Well, Fran, have you been surprised by the reaction to your video? Oh yes, overwhelmed would be the overwhelmed would be the word really. Twenty years ago, I probably would have voted no, but now that I know gay people and see the love and joy they can bring to life, and I will be voting yes. Somebody said, "Well, I I don't know any gay people." People will say, like, well, I don't know any gay people. But you probably know lots of gay people, no. but you don't know that... No, even before, you don't know that they're gay. Yeah. In, and they're no different from anybody else, good Lord. No different at all. So um, tell me about the photos here, Paddy and Bridge. Well, that... Paddy and Breach have yeah, five man. children. Wow, okay. You've got a tribe there, haven't you? Yeah, yes. Sure are. Four are married. Yeah. And this is the lovely shot of um, Corrie there. Oh, yeah. But their gay oh, son, Corrie, is not. He was yeah. the one who wasn't equal to the rest. Exactly. Yes, yes. They wanted to make sure that he had equal rights. He'll be up on this wall as well. Yeah, 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 hopefully. As a mother, it was hurtful in a way. You know, it was hurtful that there was this one person now who wasn't equal to the others. And thankfully now, that's all put right with the yes vote. Their son Porig is grateful for their support. Do you get to come home much, Porig? Uh, oh yeah, it's only an hour from here to Dublin. So this family is a living yeah, example of the social change yeah. taking yeah. place <laughs> in Ireland. They're keeping out of trouble. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> They've sure had to make up their own minds about <laughs> right <laughs> and wrong. I think it's more Christian to have a bit of compassion and love for your gay community, gay children. Nobody knows when they're going to have somebody belonging to them will come out and say, I'm gay. What are, what are they going to do? Are they going to say, don't want anything to do with yeah. you? We yeah. were blessed. We we're, were blessed that we just, our love for our Boric was unconditional, is yeah. unconditional. Yeah. There, so. Well, <clears throat> I have absolutely no trouble with the church. I'm still a good Catholic. And I would say maybe I'm a better Catholic than I was, really. I think Ireland is so small uh, and so intimate that you can almost uh, see a social change, as it were, sweeping over the country. We can see our big picture because it's, it's such a small picture, really. But anyway, you'd be surprised if many will decide to come at a later date. Or Jimmy just say and that Tony not are counting down arrive. the months so until their wedding in no, February. Not, not, for you, no. not real strawberries, I take no, it. No. Yeah, Their engagement to it has now, brought them closer together. Yeah. Well, we have to get flags. I love the way the way he kind of fits, you know, he fits in my life, he fits with me. Um, we fit together, you know, and, and since, since we've become engaged, and uh, I tell him I love him more often, you know, and it, that's, that's kind of changed, and, it, and I can see the change, you know, and he tells me he loves me often enough as well. The marriage equality referendum has changed perceptions of Ireland, both inside and out. That we're not a backward little country that we used to be 20 years ago. It'll change lives of thousands of gays and lesbian people out there for the better. I think that people shouldn't be afraid to let other people be happy. It's not too bad, it's actually... 
Yeah, it's all right. It was to walk, and it's actually quite nice. It's quite fine. Yeah, as you said, once you're used to it. Yeah.